By studying maps, I worked out that the nearest civilization to the remote Capricorn Ranges was Ashburton Down Station. My plan was to visit the station and find out if they knew how I could get to the Crystal Pyramid. At a remote truck stop on the Northwest Highway, I met Joyce, who ran a takeaway food bus selling burgers. She also ran Emu Creek Station, 310,000 acres of red earth country, running only 1,000 to 1,100 head of drought master cattle. I told her of my plans to visit the Capricorn Ranges. She said, you'll get sand from here on in. Watch out for the blackfellas' dogs. They get paid $10 a day to feed them, but don't. They form big packs of up to 50. The locals out here don't camp alone. Light a fire at night to keep the bastards away. I take the turn off to Ashburton Downs. I calculate that to take this trip, I'll be taking my supplies right down to the edge. Fuel, water, food. That night as I camp out, the sound of scrub bulls breaking the silence, I wonder what it is that drives men to explore. Is it that in searching for the unknown, we hope to find ourselves? The next morning I visit the homestead. Stereotypes are broken with most of the workers being female. I speak with Andrew, the owner of my plans to find the pyramid. He's a little amused and informs me the range is about 30 kilometers from the homestead. He draws up a rough mud map on a piece of paper. Rough country out there. I don't want to have to come and save ya. I told him I'd spend the night out there and return before noon tomorrow. It's pretty harsh country. Ashburton Downs covers 870,000 acres, running a mere eight to 10,000 head of cattle. The mining tracks I followed hadn't been maintained for half a century. Fields of huge boulders and sandy creek bed washouts. I was determined not to drop my bike, knowing with my popped rib, I wouldn't be able to lift it. I find what looks like the Capricorn Ranges, five mountain peaks running on a straight line east to west. I find a load of copper ore and some empty beer bottles to suggest the area had been mined. The fourth peak was where the Crystal Pyramid was supposed to be. I ate the last of my food using my bike for shade. I then climbed to the top in the searing midday heat. I couldn't find any trace of the Crystal Pyramid and decided to set up camp for the night atop the mount. It didn't really worry me that I didn't find the pyramid. I was completely alone in this timeless landscape and I was comfortable with that. I had no fear. I felt confident in my ability to get myself in and get myself out of this remote location. That morning I whistled up the sun, a side echo resonating across the vast silent valley below. I've never been alone in such a harsh, isolated environment. I was overcome with awe. I felt very small, but also connected to all that surrounded me. I felt an immense feeling of well-being. I headed back to the homestead and told Andrew what I'd found. Nah, mate, that wasn't the right mountain. You were 10k shy. Oh well, somewhere out there the crystal pyramid remains. I may not have found it, but I did find something, something within, a belief in myself to be able to go out there in the desert, like the mystics of the past, to be alone with my thoughts, and to be totally comfortable with that.